is the Big O Show. So uh, there you go. That's our new dog. You like our new Dolphins logo? Is it sleek enough for you? You're talking to me? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right, right? It's all right. Okay. It's all right. All right. Um, can you, like, calm people down? Because I don't know. Did somebody write an article about the Dolphins not taking them lightly or something or or taking the, the lines lightly? Uh because is I don't know why people have brought it up on the on the chat board today several times that they what does that mean that the Dolphins would take them lightly and I'm like I'm wondering if somebody I haven't read all the articles out there so I'm wondering did somebody like put the scare tactics into somebody did the Dolphins at any point say they're taking anybody lightly no and I know the question was brought up to tour yesterday and. Of course, he said exactly what you would expect somebody to say, which is, no, they're a good team. And there was somebody else who said they're a good team and all oh, that. They ask you, you're playing a one in six team and all that. How do yeah, you get Yeah, one in five, and it's like, okay. And, right. But, um, okay. no, I, if, if, if there's such a thing, they're actually a, they're not a horrible one in five team. Uh, no. You look at the game no. at Dallas last week, they easily could have won. They were in a position to win, and they fumble at the one yard line when they're ready to take the lead. Um, and they're fourth in the NFL in total offense, so they've done some things right. They were leading the league in scoring through the first four games, and now the last two games they're turning the ball over. Shocking with Jared Goff at quarterback, right? Um, but it's not just him. Uh, yeah, that and then – little, little shot there. Sorry, Jared. Um, but, no, no, they're not a horrible team. And their defense, which was horrible – the last, the first four weeks of the season, last week actually had a pretty decent performance against Dallas. Again, that final score of twenty-four to six was not reflective of how that game went. Yeah, no, you're you're right about that, and yeah, you yeah you got to adjust a little bit so people can actually see the mouth talking. You know, there there we go, there we go. I want to okay. make sure I get the Expos logo in there. Always, always. Um, now four trades already, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think happens? Cause I, I mean, you gotta be making them. I hope they're trying. I gotta make it because you, you know, it takes two to tango and, and, uh, it takes the, the compensation is always the key, but yep. you, you gotta figure they're trying to make a move for a DB somewhere. Right. Yeah. But again, tell me the DB, the good DB, who's going to make an impact here. Who's, who's on the Greedy block. Williams, Greedy I'm Williams, sorry? Greedy Williams. Greedy okay. Williams. Okay. Um, okay, I mean Cleveland is a shithole, no, no, and they're that's... trying to get rid of Kareem and Greedy. I don't care about the the Ronnie Harrison guy. I know that there there's some talk that they might put him on the block at strong safety. He doesn't really convince me that much. And okay. and Conklin is another guy that that guy's done already. I don't care about that. But Kareem Hunt's interesting. Good. Yeah, yeah, he oh, he used to be a hell of a player. But but the injuries and the wear and tear, it's just he's not that guy anymore. But Greedy Williams would be a guy that I would like to chase a little bit here. Again, what are they asking for? Right. The, but now the good thing for Greedy is I believe he's a backup right now. Is he? I think I he's they have, playing. they have Denzel Ward on one side. I can't and remember who's on the other side. They have the other kid, bro. Yes. I think he's the third corner. So he's lost a little value because he doesn't play much. And so because of that, I, I think that there's a chance that maybe you can get him for a little lesser price than you normally would. No, correct. And, and if the price is reasonable, he's definitely somebody who would be intriguing without question. Uh, and that's, that's with every trader, that's going to be, I mean, you look, you look at the Eagles trade for Robert Quinn, um, for them to give That's up a fourth trade round for the pick. Eagles, bro. And, the, and, and the Bears are eating up some of his salary from this year. And he's got awesome. like, I don't know if it's 13 or 14 million the next two years, but it, it's not guaranteed. So right. if the Eagles don't like what they see, they can easily, you know, dump them or restructure, try to restructure. Cleveland game, but from last year, the starting corners were. I'm trying to pull it up here. And I, oh, Greg, oh, Newsom. There we go. I knew it was the other kid, bro. I, I, yeah. I just forgot his ass. So Greedy's third now. By the way, um, I did some investigative stuff here on the air, live, trying to figure cool. stuff out. Cool. So um, somebody told me, 
and I've never used this person as a source, but they do have some connections with the team. And so they told me that Byron Jones is kind of, um, he's not doing a Will Fuller, but he's very particular about his return that he needs to be closer to 100% is what I'm told about yeah, this. Yeah, you mentioned that Monday. Um, I, I did mention it to you. Okay, so he opted for surgery later than he should have. He went in March, which delayed it. Now it's delayed his return. I go to I go look at his contract, and after this season is the potential out window of the three year deal where you take a fourteen point eight million dollar uh, dead cap hit and you move on from him. He knows that. I'm just wondering if Byron Jones is actually planning more to be healthy for the off season and free agency than being healthy and productive for the Dolphins on the field this season because if I watch a guy delay his surgery his return has been delayed he knows his agent has to know yo you're going to get released after this year they're not going to keep you you know moving on by the way very creative uh I didn't realize it did you realize that his salary base salary went from 11 to 14 and this year it's 1.1 million well they restructured him in in the off season right Right. Yeah. So but they created some cap space by doing that. And so then that's why they're going to take the $14 million cap hit on the way out. So Correct. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking he knows that his agent knows that I can't put myself at risk and come back at 80 or 85%. I re-injure myself. I won't be able to work out for teams in the off season. I'm just saying the city no, after 30 years in this business it's not. I think it's Byron not, Jones is making business decisions, not dolphin decisions. That's just me. Oh, so you're not. I give you, I don't I think you're completely out of bounds with you, that. So when I state this case to you, what do you say, there, lawyer? I say you're. Yeah, I say you're definitely not out of bounds with that. And look, we can bitch and moan about it all we want, as far as him looking out for himself, but. Guess what? Teams make business decisions either, and they don't necessarily take the player into consideration. So if true. the situation is turned around, kind of sucks not having him on the, in uh, in the lineup. To be very honest, and this defense would be look a lot different, maybe be better, even though it has performed pretty well. Let's let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, they, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no well, more, they, no more picking on Josh Boyer, please. Leave him alone. No, no, no. They've done a, they've done a good job. Um, no, not you, not you. I'm just saying some of the. The fans kill Josh Boyer all the time, which I don't understand that, but whatever. Um, so, but and then there may come a point where he's like, okay, this looks like it's a team that's going places. And, and I think also that may factor into it as well is if he sees the team, okay, the team says a real shot at the playoffs, he may be like, okay, I need now I want to get my ass back in there again under the, the scenario you're presenting, which is not completely far-fetched certainly wouldn't be the first time in the history of the nfl that a player has done no 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 this happens this happens quite a bit uh you know i mean you got to make business decisions so i kind of all right so yeah so uh you uh you agree with not me on crazy that. not crazy yeah no i'm with I'm you not there. Saying, i'm not saying that's the case i'm just saying it's not it's not a crazy uh hypothetical jamal perry uh knows the defense uh, your thoughts on the additions of uh, the addition of Jamal Perry? Um, what can they do with because the, my problem he's got is flexibility, he can play special teams, but uh, I mean let's let's and he, I small. guess now he's fully healthy from the ACL. But let's be honest, he's not an impact player. I mean, it's not somebody who's going he's going to come into the lineup and you're going to see a noticeable difference. I mean, I don't I don't want to be like be a excuse my language be a dick about it, but it's not. Again, it's not an impact player. That's it's additional depth for the secondary if they get to that point where they activate him. Uh yeah, because my, my problem is um they've done a good job with the secondary guys. I don't know how they replace Brandon Jones. And I like Eric Rowe, but I, I think he's a, a specialty player almost. I think he's very inconsistent when it comes to receivers and backs and all that. With tight ends is where he finds his most consistency in coverage. And I, he's definitely not the blitzer that Brandon Jones is. And so, is yeah, right. Not I don't many. know. How you, 
you can't replace that guy, right? I mean, that's yeah, just he's got a very it. unique. He's got a very unique skill set. Um, it's God. it's interesting because because you know, we can harp on his coverage deficiencies all we want, but he's got a very unique combination of being a tremendous blitzer as well as a very good tackler and you know the the, the one thumper they have in the secondary. So yeah, no, it's a unique skill set that, that that no they can't replace and there are not that many players like him he's just he's very unique yeah i am uh i am terrified of of losing that kid because unfortunately it just puts them in a in a really difficult bind uh from here on out because this is one of those guys man he just he just absolutely brings it uh your thoughts on on to his comments yesterday when uh when asked about you know, um, you know, sliding and all that stuff. And he, and then what was his uh, exact quote? A weird competitive thing. Yeah. You know, I can tell you I'm going to slide all that, but in the middle of the game, it's going to be a weird competitive thing. Appreciate the honesty. Appreciate the competitiveness. But Jesus, yes. Christ, Jesus Christ is a dumb dude. And – and then I saw some comment of like he, he like he appreciates this because he it's a it's a pushback against the pussification of football. No, it's called being dumb. I mean, sorry. Um, like I said earlier in the week, he did something. He's done two things that Marino's never done. One is throw six touchdowns in a game, and two, take on tacklers twice in a game where Marino never did it once in his entire life. Well, Marino okay. did throw six touchdowns. Big O. Right, Jets no, but I mean, Jets, but right, but that's what I'm saying. He he had no intentions of never putting a shoulder into somebody. That's my no, point. No, that's why I, I thought you said he did two things that Marino's never done. I, I'm sorry, right? Okay. Throw six touchdowns in a game. Marino did throw six touchdowns in a game. Is what I'm telling you. Oh, he did. Oh, I thought he only threw against the Jets. I thought it was five, not six. It okay, so six then against the Jets, and then he tied the record by Bob Greasy in 1977 on Thanksgiving against St. Louis. So then he did two things that Marino has never done, and that's in one game take on tacklers twice. Then okay, so then we'll go that way. Okay, I mean, come <laughs> on, bro, you're yeah. gonna you're gonna idolize Marino, idolize him by he throws the ball away and never took on tacklers, never. Yeah. He had no intentions on taking on tacklers, bro. So if you want to idolize Marino, there you go, Tua. Somebody tell him that he never did that. And he always threw the ball away whenever there was any. When the play was over, Marino said, "I'm done." I mean, it's just it really is. And crazy. Marino was a and Marino was a big dude, uh, so it wasn't. Yeah. Like, but he understood. He understood that his money was being made throwing the ball, not not bowling over defenders or making tackles. And and like I said, I appreciate to his competitiveness. That's a very admirable trait, and you love to see that. But you also got to be smart about it. Yeah, and and you know what? Uh, I I don't. He has this thing. He wants to prove to people, and I don't know why he wants to prove to people that that you know he's tough. We know you're tough, dude. Stop already. Enough already. Come on, you came back from a hip injury. That's as tough as it gets. You dealt with flow for two years. That's as mentally tough as it gets. You're tough, bro. You you dealt with Saban. You know you're you're tough. I know that already. Yeah, stop proving it. Stop it. So what do you, you think of this, what you think of this well, funky stat here? Well, yeah, it's 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 inaccurate. I hate to break it to you. Why is that? Where's Zach Wilson? Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's four and zero this year. Is he? And game started and uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, finished. He started the he game is? against Pittsburgh week four when he came back from the, the knee injury. But are we supposed to give the Jets any kind of credit? Is that fair? I don't know. I, I deal in facts. Oh, damn it. I deal in facts. You ruined it. Yeah. Sorry. That doesn't make the stat doesn't make the stat look good oh, if, uh, if 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 there's a jet involved. Never let Are you sure? Are you sure Milf didn't get in the way and throw a pass or two in one of those games? By the way, it was at is it Mina Kimes pointed out that Mike LaFleur's nickname is MILF for his name Mike LaFleur, and his quarterback is Zach Wilson. That's funny. <laughs> How awesome is that? That's funny. That's yeah. a good I'm one. Sure I'll, just leave, I'll just leave it right there. And it was like, that was good. Yeah, that's that funny. was good. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. She's smart as hell. She is. She's very good. 
Um, uh, but no, I mean, and and Zach will and Zach Wilson has played one good game in those four. Shockingly enough, it was against the Dolphins. His passer rating is like in the seventies or lower in the other. Oh yeah, three no, they're games. they're winning with running game and defense. Well, so they're, right. yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're five yeah, and two. Not, yeah, yeah, and actually, even uh, the other kid, uh, Hertz. It's not like his passing numbers are beastly either. You know, it's he's got decent passing numbers, but again, it's their defense and they're a running team, which is their their heart and soul of that. That's what's missing in this offense. Can well, you imagine they're, they're if they could Eagles actually run both lines of scrimmage? What's that? I said the Eagles are a bear on both lines of scrimmage. That's that's how yeah. they make their money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They but they can run the hell out of the ball, dude. Yep. Holy yep. crap. Um, you uh you like them in this game, right? I would imagine. Yeah, but don't don't laugh. I don't think I don't think it's a cakewalk in the least. And I think oh no 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 no. They just they barely beat a rookie, bro. Come on. Of no, course. correct. No, and, no. and I think to me, if it wasn't for the fact that I have tremendous confidence that the Dolphins are going to get a couple of golf turnovers, I'd be I'd be be very worried about this game. I think that to me is going to decide the outcome in the end. Are we getting any of the corners back? Kohu, Crossin, can those guys come back at all? What's the deal? They were they were both limited yesterday. I'm about to go out to practice. We'll see if they're out there. Um, of course, Mike McDaniel was asked, and it's the same same answer Dad. pretty much every time, which is they're gonna are either gonna do everything they can to play. So, right? Who knows? Um, and oblique injury is very painful, and and, and then the fact that Crossan is practicing, even though it's on a limited basis, it's a knee injury. I, who I don't know. Who knows? Um, yeah, definitely. And we won't need that. Yeah, we won't know until because the best guess is they're both going to be listed as questionable, and we probably won't know for sure until Sunday morning when the inactives come out. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, you do you expect Gaskin to get more playing time this week? No. And in fact, here's what I would tell you. I'm of the belief that if they the Dolphins do decide to scale back Chase Edmonds' workload. And I'll follow up with that because I asked uh, the offensive coordinator Frank Smith about him uh, this morning. If they do scale back Edmonds in favor of somebody else, to me, it's going to be Savan Ahmed, who I think is higher than Gaskin in the pecking order. Um, wow. But Enlighten us. Why? I don't know if it's familiarity with the system because, remember, he, he was in San Francisco sure. in training camp before he joined the Dolphins. That He's more explosive than Gaskin. Um so maybe that speed is, you know, is a better fit for the. They do love the, that. Correct. They do love that. the wide zone. Right. But I asked Frank Smith about Chase Edmonds this morning. Like, I kind of was asking more so in the pass catching department because we got four drops in the last four four games. Um, and also his rushing average is terrible. It's like under three. Uh, and basically he's he's like talking to him like would. The, the coach speak of like, you know, we're going to stick with him. He's just got to go back to the fundamentals. We're going to need him fully confident that he's going to, his game's going to come back and all that. Um, my it, guess it's, is it's, it's weird. Cause he's not a bad player, dude. Chase Edmonds is no, a good player. No. It just, it just has not translated here at all, man. Right. And, and remember his was a more inside zone scheme. This is more of an outside zone scheme. Correct. So, I'm wondering if he's having problems with that transition or what. I, I don't – I'm not smart enough to know what mm -hmm. that transition is and why he would struggle with it. So I'm not a player. So that part of the X's and O's stuff and the adjustments, I'm not exactly sure. But I do know that it was a different kind of zone scheme that he played in compared to what he's playing now. But they thought he would make that transition with no problem, and yet – Wow, dude, you know, and it's not like it can't happen because Mostert's done a fantastic job. Well, but Mostert's really? used to that exact scheme. And in fact, but Edmonds mentioned in training camp that one of the reasons he did sign with the Dolphins was because he was so excited about this particular scheme. I remember. Um, and no, it hasn't translated. And to me, the bigger issue is more so than than the running game is, dude, the drop passes. I mean, those have got to stop. And it's like... Yeah. You know, like, like I wrote, is he, he looks to me like he's fighting the ball. It's like he's he's the confidence is, is a little bit down right now. And, the, and he sees the ball instead of just like, you know, softly bringing it in. It's just like one of those. Yeah. 
No, I'm with you there. All right. Uh, any other news injury wise? You're Austin Jackson. What's the Austin Jackson now? Better hurry his ass back because he's about to become Wally Pip. Okay. Yeah, but he's he wasn't at practice yesterday. Uh, next week is when the Dolphins have to make. And mind you, they don't they don't have to like bring him back in the lineup. What they do have to do is decide whether they're going to put him on the fifty three. Or keep him on pop, or sorry, or keep him on IR, which means then he would be out for the season. Uh, but that decision doesn't have to be made until next week. He certainly doesn't look like he's playing this week, either. Uh, so we'll see. Well, if Shell continues to play this way, I mean, you you see what's going on in New Orleans now? Like Jameis is about to come back, and they and uh, Allen said, uh, "No, we're we're riding with uh, the the Red Rifle." We're one of the top scoring teams yards right now. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not uh, disturbing this groove. And they're two and, and five. Uh, and yeah, I know. But offensively, they're playing. I guess. Yes, they're. They've got other issues. But I guess that's that's what I'm saying. That the quarterback is not the issue right now. Which, again, we're talking about the red rifle. But whatever. But I that's know. my point. If Brandon Shell is playing well for you for a couple of weeks, uh you you. It, it's like Austin is still kind of the unknown. Girl. So it's not like it's something that's super proven. It's not like it's Teron Armstead or Connor Williams. Like whenever they would come back from an engineer who's filling in, your, your ass is getting out of the way. They're go, they're going to start. Girl. Austin Jackson hasn't earned that same respect. You could see him losing his job to Brandon Shell, right? If Brandon continues yeah, on this pace. No question. No question. Yeah. But it'd still be nice to have him on the 53. I mean, you know, and then sure. yeah. because if there's some slippage in Shell's play, then you can put auction Jackson back in and it gives you some flexibility, uh, you know, as far as your backup, cause he can play guard or tackle. No. And I w I'd rather have Austin as my swing tackle than Greg little. Let's just, fair. yeah, let's That's just fair. be, let's just, you know, call it like we see it. All right. What are you working on at all dolphins.com? So folks can check you out, my friend. Well, I'm going to do something on uh, Andrew Van Ginkle. Uh, love him. No, I love him too. And an interesting comment from Josh Boyer, today about why he's not getting more playing time on defense, uh, which I'm not necessarily Agreed. I understand, but I don't like it. Let's put it right. put it that way. Um, and then I may do something on the, on the Dolphins and facing Jared, Jared Goff, the aforementioned Jared Goff. Because if you remember, Dolphins faced him in two his first NFL start back in 2020. Right, right. Okay. All right, good stuff. And follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL. For those of you listening, of course, if you're watching, you can see it right there. But if you're listening at Poopart NFL and follow him there so you can keep up with everything going on with the Miami Dolphins. Alan, as always, thank you, my brother. We will catch up next week. Sounds good. Have a good weekend. You got it. There he is, the great Alan Poopart, baby. Getting it done. That's what it's all about. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.